God bless you and thank you for tuning in to another Decision Time broadcast. Well, the word is coming today to remind us that you should not be in a particular place too long. Sometimes we find ourselves comfortable and we feel like I don't need to go any further, but you've been there long enough. Listen, through our uh, messenger on today, Elder Gregory Davis, we're going to find out that you have been here long enough. Whatever you do, don't change that dial. The Word of God is up next. The Lord our God spake unto us in Horeb, mm -hmm. saying, Ye have dwelt long enough in this mount. Focus on that, the two words, long enough. And then remember what the artist said in the singing, I've been in the storm too long. Deuteronomy 2, 2 through 3, let's begin at the second verse. And the Lord spake unto me, saying, Ye have come past this mountain long enough. And my subject today is I've been in it and I've been around it long enough. And today I'll be coming out of it. God is saying I, I I was, I've been contemplating on this message for a while, and this morning, I, about 3 o'clock, I said, I, I know a, a song, something. And I got up this morning, couldn't, I couldn't. Then I thought about, I, it took me to that song, I've been in this storm too long. And God is saying, you know, when we say that, I've had enough. We are saying uh, it a little different than the way God would put it. Because when, when we make a statement like, <laughs> I'm tired, I'm tired of this, tired of the way they treat me, I've had enough, I've been in this long enough, I've been going through this long enough, then most of the time we are getting ready to do something to somebody, <laughs> oh yeah, or mess up ourselves. When we, when we make statements like that, I'm tired now. But, and I, and I try to kind of put this, I do honor God, I really God, I, I, I try to put this in perspective, I say, well God, he don't get tired like we get tired. We can't put him in that category. So God took me to this scripture where he told Moses in the sixth verse of the first chapter of Deuteronomy, ye have dwelt long enough in this mount. Some of us, God is trying to use us, trying to work with us, trying to uh, 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 encourage us. And, and when they say we have dwelt there, that means you, you have stayed there in your spot too long. Saying the same thing. Coming back with the same request. Asking for the same healing. So he, he, he went, took me to that uh, second chapter and, and it said that some of us been in it, but some of us just go round and around and around in a circle. And he told Moses, well, in another way of saying it, you have come past this mountain, this situation in your life. You have come past this long enough. Now it's time for you to move out. God is saying, it's time 
for us to move out. Now, let me use a few more scriptures here. I will uh, uh, make a statement like uh, God will tell us sometime when he, he trying to get our attention and we want to do our own thing. Many times we've told our children. But God would, he, he won't, God just say, throw his hands out, I, I step back. If you want to do your thing, how many times we've done that? Well, if, if, if you want to do it, just step back. You big enough man, woman, boy, girl, if you can handle it. Oh, yeah, you've told your children. Well, I, you know, if you don't want me, to, if you don't listen to them. Oh, yeah. God is telling us, but God give us instruction. God give us uh, uh, answers before he act. A lot of times we act and then have to make up for the way we act. But God give us instruction. And let me, let me, let me go to, to this Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Because before God stepped back, he tells us. 28th chapter in the first verse. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord, thou God, to observe and to do all his commandment, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Second verse, and all these blessings shall come on thee. That's if you let me help you. If you let me help you now, I'm going to let you know what I can do for you. We tell our children, I, I, you do, I give you this, I give you A, I B, and a, but if, if, if you just follow my instruction, this will be the end results. He said, all these blessings in the first shall come upon thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord. And then he give, that was clear. That was very clear. It, 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 and so some things you don't have to go through, but if you go through, it's your choice. But you can make a declaration today. You can tell the devil, long enough, devil. You're not going to control my life. You not, I'm going to listen to somebody. I'm going to listen to the Lord. But God also, he gave us the positive. And you know, that's what we have to learn how to do also. Let's, let's get, when, when things are, are kind of rough and you're talking to your children, give them the positive result first. And then tell them the consequences if they don't follow. Right? right. Well, then look what God done in the 15 verse of that same chapter. But it, it it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord God, thou God to observe, to do all his commandment and his statutes which I command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake. We're wondering why things going on in our life. We're wondering why uh, we seem to can't Get ahead. Did you hearken? But you can make that decree. You can make that declaration today. Long enough. I've, I've, I've been through this. I've gone through this long enough. And, 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 and you say, if you don't hearken in the 16 and 17 verse, curse, and it just went on through, curse shall thou be in the city. You mess up El Paso County. Curse shall thou be in the field. Y'all ain't in the field no more. Curse shall thou be, shall be thou basket, thou store. That, that, it, it's your, your, your pockets have holes in it. Wondering what happened to your money. Don't know what happened. But you have a tomato. Now, we, we also, I went to Paul, Paul told them in, in Acts, the 17th chapter, and 
And there was some, there was some people that were doing some of everything, uh, worshiping night on gods, and, and they didn't know what direction they were going. Some of us don't know what direction we want to go. We, 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 haven't, we haven't settled our spiritual minds yet. We're wondering. 36 years old, 46 years old, 56 years old, 66 years old, 76 years old, still wondering. But we ought to come to ourselves at, at some point and tell ourselves because in this message, God is telling us long enough what you are doing going wrong. And, 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 and I can help you, but it, you don't. But then you got to tell yourself long enough. Paul said in the 17th chapter of Acts in the 22nd verse, that then Paul stood in the midst of Mars hills and said, men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. You're dependent on things that can't help you. You're dependent on things that won't do anything for you. You're dependent on things that's going to last as long as they can get something out of you. You have to make a decree today. Long enough. Oh, Jesus. Long enough. But then in that 23rd verse of that 17th chapter, it's for, as I passed by and beheld, I saw what you, how your devotions were. I, I mean, I mean, I, 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 I and, and God is passing by us, and He's looking at how our devotion is. Oh, yes, sir. We are, we are acting one way, and trying to act out of a, a, inter, a bad internal situation. But don't. It doesn't matter how it look on the outside. How is it on the inside? Well, oh, Jesus. But he said, I passed by and I, I, I saw your devotion. I found an altar with this ascription to the unknown God, whom therefore you ignorantly worship him, declare I unto you. Paul said, I saw you. I, I, I know what you God knows some of us by way of television, by way of radio, by way of this audience. God see you. And something we do ignorantly, and God can understand that. But to a point, you got to come to yourself. God already made it his decree, his, de his declaration, long enough. And he said in that 30th verse, in the 30th verse, and the time of this ignorance, God, when, when, when he knew you were doing because you were just ignorant, you just didn't know any better. God what? God winked at it. God understood it. God under, and now I can help them because they're doing it ignorantly. But when you know that you know that you know, Jesus, let me read on here. He said in that same verse, because, and in the 30th verse, and the time of this ignorant God winked at. But now, now, listen, listen. But now commanded all men everywhere to what? Repent. Repent. Now that you know, he that knows to do good and does it not to him, it is what? A sin. A sin. It stinks in God's not. And God is saying to us, long oh. enough. No. Not I'm tired of you, because his arm is always stretched open for us and will receive us. But God is saying, long enough. But if God is saying that to you, how long would it be for you to tell self long enough? I've been in this situation long enough. 
and in nobody's fault but mine. See, that's where God can help you. In the 31st verse in that same 17th chapter, say, because he had appointed a day in which he would judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he had ordained, whereof had given assurance unto all men, then that he has raised him from the dead. God is speaking to somebody today. Praise God. Through life today. And if you hear what God said. In Proverbs, God tells us another. He gives us another declaration. He warns us before destruction. God tells us, gives us an advance notice. He don't sound, he don't, he don't tell El Paso County to go down and, and, and tell them to punch a button. He have an internal alarm that he have given each and every one of us. Proverbs 1, 24 through 28. It says, because I have called and you refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded long enough. But ye have set at naught. You have turned, because don't anybody know anything but you. But ye have set at naught all my counsel. Young people, adults alike, male, female. God didn't call it. He's talking to his people. He's talking to those that don't know God. Let him know he gave them a chance and he will give you a chance. But once he tells you, but ye have yet set at not all my counsel and would none of my reproof. I also now, 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 some of y'all might, might think this disrespectful. If I did it, y'all say, you disrespect me, laughing at me. You're talking about me. But God said it in the 26th verse. If you don't listen to me, he ain't smiling as if it hurts God when we don't listen. It hurts the parents when the children don't listen. It, it don't make us feel good. And God saying, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock you when your fear come upon you. When you really need me. Uh-uh, uh, no, I, I, just, I, just, I, just, I just bagged up. I just, I just let you, you, you're on your own. You're grown now. You want to move out? Fine. Glad I got another bedroom. Great. Praise God. But again, you know, make they used to tell me coming up, if you make your bed hard for yourself, unfortunately, you just have to sleep in it. And that's what God is telling us. Don't make your bed hard. This is about to be an easy journey. My way is easy. My burdens are light. And he told us, that, you know, I, I'm here. My arms are big enough to hold everybody. He said, cast all my cares on you because I care for you. But then in the 27 verse, when your fear come up on, come, come as desolation and your destruction come as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. Oh, God. Oh, God. God wants to set us free so we can be about ministry. But we have to make a determination. God wants us to have a balanced life with smiles, not always looking like you eating lemons. Life doesn't always consist of a frown. It costs you more to frown than it does to smile. It costs.
cost you more to frown. And we wonder why we are not being healed, delivered, set free from the condition, set free from our past, because you keep on it. And this is another thing. It, 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 God is telling us long enough, but you know what we do? We go back and keep picking at the wound you have, that should have been healed a long time ago. Anyone ever been cut? Anyone ever had a scar? And if you keep picking at it, it won't what? Where's yeah. the Priscilla? Is that okay? Praise God. You can't pick up because you could, and most of the time, we, cut, we set up our own infection. Woo. My God. God is saying, long enough, you're blaming me for your condition. But because you kept picking at the wound. And he said, long enough. Some of you have the audacity. And young people, uh, and I, I know older people got on, on these date, date lines and all that too. But here, here don't be discouraged. You, you get up so upset because, oh, I've been dating this young man for two years. And all of a sudden now he want to marry somebody else. And that's been 15 years ago. You still mad. Still mad. <laughs> and guess what? You're still not married. Because you, you still got a, a, a wound that you've been picking at. And, that, and it can't be healed. And God is saying, young people, adults, long enough. Stop blaming others for your own infection. That you caused. My God, my God. Mm, Jesus. Because you might know something about your husband in the past. Because you might know something about your wife in the past. Something about a, a good friend. You used to be a good friend, but it was in the past. And all of a sudden, you walking along and, and you talking about, oh, I, 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 I'm just thinking about, I can't believe, uh, I, I, I just was thinking about uh, what sister so-and-so told me, my wife told me, that been five years ago. And all of a sudden, you just start thinking about it again. You're picking at a wound that's going to cause infection. And God's saying, long enough. Long enough. We need to stop picking at wounds. We need to let it heal. That's the only way God can help us to, to allow things to heal in our body. Blaming yourself. That's another condition. Blaming yourself will cause depression. Yes. Being sanctified. Filled with the Holy Ghost. You can go in depression for things that you cause for yourself. Somebody said, no, Elder Dave, you got it wrong. We got it. Well, 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 let, me, let, me, let me give you what about two, 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 two examples. Elijah, man of God. Man of God. When, 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 when the, that this is the same man who went up on Mount Carmel. Took on the, the challenge of 450 Baal. Took him on. Oh God, this is, and, and, and the prophet, the, uh, and, 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 and this same man resurrected the mother's baby from the dead. The same man, oh God, when, 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 uh, uh, went and told Ahab, say, Ahab, uh, it, it's, it's going it's to be because of my word. It's not going to rain for three years. It's, gonna, it's not going to rain. This, this same, this anointed one. This was filled with God's spirit. But this same man let a woman. Well, God, after he done, done, he done all of this healing, he went into depression. You can call it what you want. Come on now. I say he went into depression. Come on. He went up. He went in the wilderness. And God is saying, some of you are by way of radio, TV, or disorder. You're sitting, you're in the wilderness. You've gone to, 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 to 
just go into a depressive state and, and to feel sorry for yourself. God said, long enough. Come out of this depression. You don't have to be there. You don't have to go there. Yes, you hear, you read. Men, women, boys and girls are taking their lives because they feel, felt like they had no other ultimatum. You, I'm telling sanctified folks before, and they knew the word, have chose to take their own life. Because they didn't know. Oh, yet they did. They do, but they didn't allow God in them and understand as Abraham did, God will provide. Oh, yes. Let me go to one more example. Jonah, another one went in depression. He ran. Then when God decided to do what he's going to do, he got depressed. Uh, because God didn't do to Nineveh what he thought he should have done. We better stop it. We better stop it. Trying to be gods. We're here to encourage. God put us here to save lives. To increase life. To help lives to be extended. He didn't come give it to us to destroy lives. But we sometimes go into our own little selves. My God, my God. God is saying long enough. And let me give you this example. We got to stand firm when we know we are right according to the word. So you've heard enough of this particular message to know and be convinced that um, it's time to, to get to moving, get to stepping, get to doing what God has called you to do. Maybe it's even repenting. Maybe it's coming out of your sin because actually you have to agree, you've been there long enough. Well, if you want to hear this again, you can do so. And we encourage you to go to our website to hear it again, see it again, share it with a friend, do all those things. Even on our YouTube channel, Decision Time Enterprises, we encourage you to go there. And until next week, in the words of our pastor, remember you have a miracle in your mouth.